Today, we're going to be offering some real solid value for the coaches out there. But also, maybe if you're considering becoming a coach and it's not the step that you've currently taken for yourself, but you're thinking, what would I do if I was a coach? Who would I help? How would I help them? What have I got to offer? Then this is actually going to be hugely beneficial for you as well. So for the aspiring coaches that are wondering, what would I do? And for the existing coaches that are like, how do I you know, double down on what I really like to do and charge more money and have bigger impact and get better results? This is going to blow your mind. And this is how to finally create the perfect niche for your coaching business. Wow. wow. Well, let's get into it. There's so many different levels to this, but we got to start with why do you niche? And I always tell this story because it's like, you know, I've been on that journey and most people have that belief that I can help everybody and I don't need to niche and I want to help everybody. The more people that you can appeal to, the more clients you'll get. And they feel like by putting out that wider net, they're going to get more clients, they're going to have make a bigger impact and everything's going to be perfect. When in reality and from experience, it's the complete opposite. And I've learned that, well, I wouldn't say the hard way because I learned fairly quickly, but I first got on a discovery call with a marketing consultant and he told me that I had to niche down. And I said, you don't know me. I can help everybody. I've got lots of experience. I'm going to change the world. And he literally pretty much hung up on me. He just sort of rolled his eyes and thought, oh, there's another one of them. I can't be bothered to waste my time. And we ended the call. I went away and did get some clients and pretty much thought, fuck you, Mr. Marketing Consultant. Told you I could help everybody. But after a little while, I was realizing that I wasn't getting great results for everybody I was working with, only a certain sort of section of people. I wasn't charging very much. Some sessions I fucking hated. I was sitting there thinking, I can't wait for this session to be over. My eyes were almost glazing over. You know, those really slow blinks that you try, you know, <laughs> you're slowly, your blinks are becoming slower and slower as you can't quite keep your eyes open anymore. And that's not a very good energetic place to be in any walk of life, let alone the business, something that you want to create impact and momentum with and, you know, get people results in. So what I realized was I was just simply coaching people. I didn't enjoy to coach. And by doing that, I was diluting the level of certainty that I was putting out in the marketplace by resonating with just one audience. I was a bit of a generalist, so no one had any real confidence that I could help them with their specific sort of objective. Therefore, I couldn't charge much because there was always a bit of a gamble with working with me. And um, yeah, I wasn't getting amazing results for everybody because some people just didn't understand them whatsoever. And I didn't resonate with them. I didn't enjoy coaching them. So I didn't, I guess, like con not consciously, but I just guess I wasn't putting in as much effort for them, those guys. And that's not fair, really. And then I just started thinking about, okay, well, who do I enjoy coaching the most? Who like pays me the easiest? And you know, who can I relate to? And those are the three key areas that I'm going to come on to in a minute. And I did niche down and I enjoyed the coaching sessions more. I could charge more for it. And it was easier to get the sale because people were like, oh, this guy helps people like me with the pain that I've got. Use the, you know, get into the outcome that I'm looking for. And it just becomes a no brainer. So before we start anywhere, guys, if you try and please everybody, you end up pleasing nobody. And if you do pick a nice specific niche of people, it's a fucking huge group of people that's going to make you as much money that you want. And you'll be in a better place. Your clients will be in a better place and your life will be a hell of a lot easier. So, because there's many people that are probably listening to this going, well, I don't want a niche. And now we, let's start with the fact that niching is important. Before we get into how to find one, let's start with it's pretty essential. Very, very essential. You know, And it's really interesting because this is a topic that we, we feel like we talk about this a lot, right? But again, what do experts do? They talk about the same thing again and again and again to different people. And there are going to be people listening to this that have never heard us talk about this topic and mm -hmm. haven't listened to any form of podcast or educational wisdom around the idea of a niche. So starting there is actually really, really important because people want specialists. They don't want generalists. People don't strive to buy a service from a generalist, someone who does a bit of everything, right? And one of the analogies that we always use is surgery because it's just such a clear analogy. It's a clear metaphor to use that everybody can understand. If you need heart surgery, you don't go and seek out the sur surgeon who does a little bit of heart and a little bit of lung and a little bit of stomach and he does your arms and legs and your limbs and he does your brain because he's a generalist. He dabbles, right? You don't go for the dabbler. You go for that one surgeon that says, I operate on hearts and hearts alone. I don't do anything else. That is my area of expertise. That's what I know inside out, upside down. I've operated on X amount of thousands of hearts and I don't 
even touch another organ. I don't even think about other organs. I go to bed at night dreaming about hearts. I wake up in the morning thinking about hearts. That's all I do. And that guy charges triple the amount. And you bet you're definitely going to go to him. Because if you need something serious, if you need something life-changing, something that means something to you, you're not going to go and spend money on the cheap generalist. You're going to go and spend money on the more expensive specialist because you know you're in safe hands. Coaching is exactly the same. And actually, paying three times as much is actually cheaper because, say, for example, you went to that other heart surgeon that does that. He thinks he can do that, but he's also a plumber and a dentist on the weekends as well. You get the, the job done from him, but it doesn't actually get you the desired outcome. Your heart's not better. And what's more expensive? You know, paying three times as much, but having your heart fixed or paying a third as much and your heart still being broken. You know, you might end up, you know, using three, four, five different heart surgeons and still not have the outcome that you're looking for in the first place. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, like, it's like when you buy anything really cheap, isn't it? You know, you end up having to buy another one and another one and another one and a replacement. And then you've spent more money, you've spent more time, heartache, attention. What was the thing that you said to me when we very first met? You said, if you think it's expensive hiring an expert, wait until you hire an amateur or something like that, mm. right? And it's absolutely true. Because then when you do hire an amateur, not only have you wasted some money, but then you've wasted a shitload of time as well because you've got to go and get the job redone and done it yeah. right this time. Think about the world of coaching. We're dealing with emotion. We're dealing with goals. We're dealing with confidence, mindset. We're dealing with past memories. We're dealing with all of this stuff that goes on inside a person's head in order to try to help them live a better life. That's mm. not to be sniffed at, right? That's a serious thing. You want to be going to someone who specializes in one area, a particular area of coaching, right? Exactly. And it's near enough impossible to market yourself unless you know who you're speaking to because everybody's different and everyone has different, like we talk about it quite flippantly. So I'll sort of break it down in a little bit more detail. There's three sort of main things that you need to be able to communicate very well as a coach. And that is the pain that you solve, the vehicle that you use to take them from the pain to the desired outcome. Pain, vehicle, desired outcome. And the pain is the thing that keeps them up at night. It's the thing that is frustrating them, making them feel shit about themselves. The thing that's going to aggravate them enough to actually make changes in their life. Because everybody wants more from their life. But it's only when things get difficult that they really go, all right, fucking hell, enough's enough. And we need to be able to communicate that we understand the pain that someone's going through. Because if we understand their pain, then it means we understand them. If we understand them, then it means that we can help them. And if we can help them, then they're going to have much more confidence that they want to invest in, in our services. So we need to understand what that pain is. And unless you know who you're speaking to and what type of topic of coaching that you're doing, you, know, you don't know what that pain is. So you're always just like shooting in the dark, hoping that someone might resonate with it rather than sort of understanding a specific audience of people and really resonating and creating content and creating programs and researching and learning around those areas. Because even if you're not an expert in that area right now or that type of person right now, because your area of focus is much more narrow, it means you can become an expert very quickly. Like if you are a stress management coach for teachers, for example, right? Such specific area, you'll bet you there is some books on that exact thing. Like, and if you read some of those books, you're going to have so much value to offer, you know, somebody just with those books, right? Just because the information is so specific. So it means you can start to truly understand your target market so well and really like put out messages that are going to resonate with them and allow your audience to understand that you're the person that can help them. So pain is one. The vehicle is the other. How specifically do you help people? Because everyone wants to help people. Everyone wants to, like, all coaches want to coach. But what type of thing do you do in your coaching? Are you helping them find what's missing? Are you helping them work out what they want from life? You know, what is that specific vehicle that you're really good at and that you enjoy that's going to help them bridge that gap between where they are now and where they want to be? And there's the last one. Where do you want to be? The desired outcome. What is it that your specific ideal client wants? What do they want? Because there's no point trying to sell them what they need because they don't know what they need. You know, they just want specific things or, you know, to feel a certain way. They don't want, you know, authenticity or breaking down beliefs and stuff like that, which all coaches try and talk about. They don't even know what those things are. Most clients want freedom, fulfillment, satisfaction, a new chapter, money, you know, success. You know, it depends on what those and what that audience is because 
it's so important to, to understand the demographics of the audience you're speaking to, otherwise you can't identify their pain and desire. Because an 18 year old boy that just left school is gonna have a completely different set of pains and desires than you know, a 60 year old woman who's left her career after 30 years and just looking to connect in with what she wants to do with their time now. They're quite extreme opposites. But can you, try, can you imagine trying to please both of those people? You'd end up just having two people that go, it just doesn't, I don't think it's for me, it's just not right. And, that's, and that is even if you get to the point where you're actually sitting in front of them and coaching them, let alone trying to speak to those two people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's near enough impossible. Like if you found yourself in the very unlikely scenario where you did end up coaching those two individuals because for some reason part of your message resonated with them, which would be so unusual because they're so different. I mean, let's take it one step before that even when you're trying to attract those clients you're trying to put your message out there you're trying to fill up your diary with clients mm. and your message doesn't clearly speak to any of those people what reason do they have to come and talk to you what reason do they have to book in a discovery call with you they're not you're not recognizing their 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 pain you're not recognizing their wants and desired outcome you don't have a vehicle that you can really specifically say this is how i'm going to help you get to where you want to be because it's also vague, right? It's yeah. also vague. But the crazy thing is, is this is where like 90%, I don't, that, that is literally a percentage I've just plucked out of thin air. But in my head, it seems like about 90% of all coaches around the world live in that world of vagueness. Oh, oh, I can, help, I, I can help everybody. Yeah, it probably, it probably is more. Probably is more. It's like a very tiny percent of those coaches that have really cracked the idea of having a niche and really fucking holding on to that, right? And running with it. Because you mentioned like putting out a message and that's obviously about, you know, speaking about how you help people, whether that's verbally at networking meetings, whether that's using social media, you know, however that, however you are delivering your message, but it doesn't just end there. Like when we're helping coaches start, launch or grow their coaching business, we always start at the niche and we call this the accuracy phase because everything has to be accurate. And the thing is, it doesn't just come down to your messaging, everything within your entire ecosystem and your entire footprint of an online coach or even offline coach. It needs to be congruent because say, for example, you are just trying to help everybody. Like people are just going to be put off by everything that you do. And they're looking for everything to be in synchronization and everything to sort of say, yes, yes, yes. To the point where it's, it's a good decision for them. They're looking for a way out. When people are looking for coaching, they're fearful of it. They don't trust people. They don't want to impart with their money. They're looking for the best reason they can to go. I just don't think it's for me. And something as little as a branding being off, like a color's not being right, or the font's not being right, or the logo being completely off can be enough for them to go, oh, it just doesn't feel right. Because it's something in there is misaligned in some way. And that's because you're just trying to please everybody with something that's just too general. So say, for example, use those analogy of the 60 year old woman, the 18 year old boy, your logo, one of those would not like it, you know, or both of them will likely not like it because you'll be trying to go in the middle somewhere. Same with everything that you say. So same with the content that you write. It's just not going to be valuable really to them because you're going to, how can you even like share story? How can you, you know, share strategies? How can you talk about different parts of their life if you don't really know what stage you're talking to them on or where they're at? So it's, it's going to be so general. You're going to be like, it's trying to like fight, you use this analogy before, like trying to fight a man in the dark. You're just hmm. hoping that someone happens to just resonate with a random message that you put out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's interesting what you said a minute ago about like one of those people won't like your logo. And if you yeah. do this right, one of them shouldn't like it. That's the yeah. thing, isn't it? One of them shouldn't like it. I think it was actually you that I learned that from in terms of um, marketing being a repellent. Nobody thinks about marketing that way. Everybody thinks about marketing like it should be this thing that we're trying to attract the masses. We're trying to attract everyone around the world. But your marketing should repel certain demographics. They should repel mm. certain individuals. And I don't think we should underestimate how, what, a, what a revolutionary idea that is because most people would think about marketing like, I want more, 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 yeah. more. And that's true, but you want more of the right person. You want more of the right demographic, the type of demographic that you're going to enjoy to coach, the demographic that you're going to be able to help, the demographic that's going to be able to pay you for your coaching, someone who resonates with your message, your marketing, your message, your logo, your approach, your content. It's not about writing that content and putting that logo out there and your approach, just trying to attract absolutely everybody you can. It's about yeah. attracting a very specific type of person. Where people get fearful is they then make the automatic assumption if they single down, right down to this one type of demographic, then there's not going to be enough of them. 
There's not enough yeah. work. There's not enough clients, right? But you could get fucking ridiculously specific. And the chances are that whatever small demographic you land upon is probably so big that you as an individual could never coach every one of those people around the world. You couldn't even coach a percentage of them. So the pool yeah. is always still very, very large, no matter how specific your niche is. I mean, you need like a hundred, three grand clients a year to make 300 grand a year, a hundred. Yeah. And if you look at how many accountants called Dave that live in Birmingham that have brown hair, you'll find that there's fucking 48,000 of them, for example. <laughs> you know, something stupid like that. There's a lot of fucking people on this earth, guys. You know, I would love to spend a 12-week program going, you know, into the depths of niche. And you know what? Most of it will be persuading people that it's a decision that they should make because a lot of them are resistant to it. Like you say, they think they're going to exclude themselves. They think they're going to make the wrong choice. They doubt in their ability and think they might not be able to serve their audience. I think they're going to, yeah, exclude people. And the, the thing is, guys, with your value ladder which you may not know of yet, so I'm aware of that. But when you're putting out things like content on social media, that is for everybody, you know? You don't have to please everybody just for your coaching. Like, you can say, I like to put out value on social media. I like to give out free ebooks. I've got a Facebook group where I share tips and strategies, but the people that I like to work with exclusively are these types of people on this type of thing. It doesn't mean that you're this, like, evil marketing genius that are not working with people that can't afford it or don't sit within your perfect demographic. It means that you're very protective over the, the, your time because it's the most invaluable, it's the most valuable commodity we own. And you want to spend your time with people that you truly resonate with, that you can get results with, that are going to allow you to sit within that zone of genius, talking about things you're truly passionate about, not forcing it out. So Let's jump into how to find your coaching niche in as brief as we can, because obviously uh, can go on for a while. But I mean, I alluded to it earlier. In very basic form, there's three things you want to think of. One, what do I love talking about? What do I love doing? What, you know, what, what do I read on? What do I just enjoy? What, what's my favorite part of my current coaching conversations? And by the way, guys, don't base this on what you've already done. Because so many people go, well, I, I'm trying to find my niche. I do, I do tend to work with quite a lot of like single mums. So maybe I'll pick that as my niche. And it's like, well, that is because maybe you're friends with a lot of single mums and they're on your Facebook right now. And they're the ones that just happen to contact you. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're going to enjoy doing or where the money's at or, you know, what people can truly get value from you. It just so happens to be what's fallen on your lap due to the environment that you're in. So try not to look at what's currently going on. Try and look at the best case scenario and build an infrastructure and a foundation around those things. So yeah, ask yourself, like, would you really enjoy this? Because there's two things you need to pick out, a topic and a type of person. So you need to pick like, the type of coaching you're going to do. Now, again, there's a lot of information to this. So we might have to break this down in two parts as well, you know. This might be a two part, guys. There's a lot to it. You know, there's, a, there's a two parts of it. The type of coaching as in the topic, confidence, fulfillment, clarity, mindset, peak performance, business, all sorts of different areas to focus on. And then there's the type of person that you're serving. So the certain demographic of person, whether that's an entrepreneur or a teacher or a chiropractor or a yogi or a traveler or a nomad or, or an age group or personality type or introvert, extrovert. You know, so you've got the topic and the audience. And I know that for people listening, you're thinking, well, coaching isn't really about having specific value to talk about. It's about asking challenging and thought provoking questions. It's about going through models and frameworks. And what I want you to understand guys is this is 95% marketing really. That's why we niche because you end up doing quite similar things, but you're just doing it for a certain audience. And you also got this mutual ground of interest and passion, which allows you to resonate more with your audience and, and actually have a show an interest in what they're talking about. <laughs> because say for example, you, you, you're an entrepreneur and you love like action taking and risk taking and, you know, ideas and vision and stuff like that. And then you're, and you're working with this person that's in this nine to five. that's very safe. That's goes very stagnant. Everything they're talking about is just going, you know, oh God, you know, I'd hate to have that mindset, you know, it literally boring to listen to. It doesn't mean you have to talk about entrepreneurship. If you're coaching entrepreneurs, it just means that you understand that audience. And it also means that you can show like maybe a mutual interest in that person mm -hmm. or the topic that they're discussing. It doesn't mean for one minute that you ever start giving them business advice i think that's a lot of people get confused they think that because they niche down in a certain area they have to be an expert or they, and they have to offer value in that area it doesn't mean yeah. that 
it means you market yourself to those people. So you're able to be accurate with your marketing messaging. And it means that you can enjoy the conversation and have a mutual interest. And that's around about it. Yeah, definitely. The, the fact that when you take a coaching course and you become a coach and you learn the different tools and techniques and frameworks, you realize that a lot of it is based around asking questions and not actually handing over any wisdom or information or experience. Mm-hmm. That is the number one reason why people fall into that trap of saying, yeah, but I can help everybody. And it's like, because technically you can, but you're not going to be able to get any clients with that kind of mindset. And also you're not going to enjoy yourself for 99% of the time. So even though all of the techniques that you learn are all about not pouring in information, but extracting information, and they're about asking questions. Yes, technically you can help anybody with those questions that you're going to ask them and those frameworks. But like Lewis said a minute ago, this is like 95 or 99% marketing. That's the point. And even though you're going to be asking questions. If you have an absolute fucking passion for race car driving and you niche down and say, you know what, I'm going to help race car drivers increase their confidence. You're going to be doing the same confidence building techniques with the race car drivers than you would with the single mums. But at least you're sitting there with a passion and an interest and wanting to know about their experiences and their wisdom and what they've done that day and what they're struggling with because you have an interest in the topic. Techniques are the same, but the level of interest that you have will allow you to bring so much more passion to the sessions and interest that inevitably you'll be more successful because you'll be putting more into your sessions and it'll be more enjoyable for you. Yeah. So that's the first one, guys. Pick something that you genuinely enjoy talking about or because remember, there's two parts, the topic and the audience. So you've got to pick something you genuinely enjoy talking about and learning about and discussing in the topic part. And you also need to pick a type of person that you genuinely like to converse with and sit down with. Like sometimes I ask the coaching question, like, who would you, who would you like to be stuck in a lift with? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. who, who, who would actually, you would enjoy your time um, being with in like a situation like that, because that's what you're going to be doing in the coaching session. You're going to be on zoom where you're going to be in a room and you're going to be stuck with that person. And you want to be enjoying that time because it's your life. We're fucking talking about pick a topic that you enjoy, that you got an interest in, and pick a type of person that you actually want to spend time with and converse with. Another one around the topics as well, which I find quite interesting, is someone said to me a long time ago that voids create values. The things that we didn't have when we were growing up all of a sudden become the things that we value a lot as well. Dr. John D. Martini, wasn't it? Dr. John D. Martini. I think it was was one of our colleagues at the coaching masters who said it to me and they obviously nicked it from john d martini right okay (laughs) when i heard it i was like that's fucking great and it's true as well isn't it and that can also be something that contributes towards the coaching niche having a real passion for something because you didn't have it when you were growing up there is a void in your life at some point and you want to try to fill that void so you have a deep interest in a particular topic because of that that can contribute also that's point two point one is Find something you have a genuine interest in and a type of person that you genuinely want to spend time with. The second section, which you want to overlap with this niche, is something that you have like a genuine experience with in some, in some way. Now, this isn't essential because not everybody has like life experiences, unfortunately. You know, they are such valuable lessons and they really allow you to resonate and connect with your audience. And, but they're, they're not essential, but if you can find one, it's, it's much better. So if you've experienced crippling self-doubt as a teenager and you worked out specifically what you needed to do to build confidence and belief in yourself, then you've got this real personal firsthand experience of how that actually works. Not how the books teach you or how the coaching conversations go, but what fucking things you have to do in your mind to get you to that place. And not, it doesn't just help you in your coaching sessions. It more helps you from a, again, from a marketing perspective, because it helps you communicate that you actually know what this person's going through and you know how to get them out the other end. It's like, guys, I've been there and done it. Let me show you. You can't be a bit of first hand real life experience. So think about like, what, what's your journey been? Like, what have you overcame? Come, what do you find really easy now as a result of an experience or a way of living that's allowed you to, to adopt those skills and traits? You know, you might go, Oh, I'm, I'm really confident. Fuck, I didn't really realize that. Why is that? Well, I guess I always make the effort to smile at myself in the mirror. I always think about everything that I've got to be, you know, grateful for and all my skills and abilities and traits. And, you know, I always push myself out of my comfort zone and surround myself with new people that make me feel uncomfortable and allow me to grow. 
And actually, fucking hell, yeah, that that has been my experience. I've always gone out there looking to build my confidence, and I actually have those. I have those answers now. That would be a great fucking niche to pick because I think so many people get caught up in what should I pick for my marketing niche, not how do I actually help people, what do I actually enjoy doing, and what the fuck has my journey been, and how can I actually help people? You know. Yeah. Yeah, and that happens all the time, doesn't it? You know, people aren't paying enough attention to what am I interested in? Who would I like to be stuck in a lift with? What void have I had? What am I really passionate about? What am I really good at that I can help people do? People, so many people go at it like what sounds good, right? Yeah. That's a big fucking trap, isn't it? What sounds good? Oh, I tell you what, this sounds really niche, this sounds really specific. And also, it just sounds professional. It's like, fuck's sake, man. Come on, yeah, just find yeah. that thing that you're genuinely passionate about, that you can help people with, a void that you have, a type of person you want to spend time with, something that you can really bring to the table based on experience or based on a void or a passion or based on an interest, based on something that you can genuinely do to help that other person, not just what sounds good. Yeah, you know, that's awful, isn't it? I hate those pretentious ones because because we um, what we do is when we found our niche, and we haven't obviously quite finished that. We 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 advise people to create what we call an I help statement, which is a very simple sentence which shows how you help people. And the way to do that is figure out what your niche is and how you want to help people, and then write that in a very congruent sentence that explains it. But as you say, people write ones just for the sake of writing an I help statement without doing the work beforehand. And they just try, they make, but my, my, I, I hate the pretentious ones. You know, the ones that are like, I help self women with self-limiting beliefs become abundant by building a unshakable relationship with themselves so they can master every aspect of their life, emotionally, spiritually, financially, and become the goddess queen that they were born to be. And I think, shut up. You, yeah. How the fuck are you going to help them with that? Yeah. Tell me right now how you're going to help them do that. Exactly. That's the question, isn't it? That is the big fucking question. It's like, you have to be able to answer that question specifically. And I'm going to fucking emphasize that word specifically tell us how exactly you're going to help that person with that pain point achieve that desired outcome. Tell us specifically, because the chances are I help statements like the one that you just said, are all just to fucking sound good, right? Yeah. But there's not been any thought behind it in terms of, well, actually, the reason that that's my I help statement was because this was a pain that I once had. This was the vehicle I used to overcome it. These are the type of people I love spending time with. This is the knowledge and the value that I have to give. This is something mm -hmm. I'm really passionate about. It just is for the sake of a fucking book title or just to sound good on Facebook. And it can sound, sound good, but not at the expense of damaging the fundamentals of how you've constructed the sentence. Like, um, I think mine sounded quite cool when I used to do it. And, and then I've learned a lot since this, since then. And this isn't actually an accurate I help statement because it doesn't have the right parts to it. But mine was, and I'll tell you how this came about. So I was sitting there in this like stage of having all these random clients making some money, but not as much as I wanted to, thinking, who, who actually do I enjoy working with? And I was like, it's people like me, entrepreneurs, because I was start, one of the reasons why I started the coaching business is I, I wanted to you know, start a business as well. Like I love the idea of building a business as much as I love the idea of being a coach, which made it a little bit easier for me. I always feel quite sorry for the people that hate business or hate social media, want to be a coach. I think, fuck, you're in trouble. It's much better if you like both. Yeah, and I was thought, I actually like helping the entrepreneurs. That's, that's the people who I resonate with. That's the people I love like talking about their goals and the things that hold them back, resonate and understand where they're at. So I was like, okay, entrepreneurs. And then I was like, and what do they all, what do they seem to want? Why are they coming to me for coaching? Because everyone comes to you for a reason why they're doing the coaching. Like, oh, I'm here to like, you know, give it a go. They're there because they're like, I want to get a new job. I want to, you know, get a relationship. They have some sort of reason. And these entrepreneurs, all of them had a specific goal within their business that they wanted to achieve. So I was like, okay, so they just want to make stuff happen. Okay, they want to make stuff happen, right? Okay, fair enough. And what's the problem? Like, why are they all coming to me? And they all come to me with this like fucked up head. They're always like, oh, just my head's like, I need, I need to sort my head out. I just need to sort my head out. And I, I use their exact language. And I was like, okay, so I help entrepreneurs sort their head out and make things happen. And that was it. That was my help statement. Now, it sounded quite cool because it was like, I didn't try too hard. It made a lot of sense. But the key point of it was it had the right attributes. You know, it had the pain sorting their head out. It had the outcome make things happen. And it was for a relevant audience, uh, entrepreneurs. And it was specific. The problem it didn't, the thing it didn't have was the vehicle and how I specifically help 
those people and uh, you know as as i've learned more I've, uh, I've learned to get even more accurate with things that i do so anyway um yeah if you're going to create an i help statement guys create it with a foundation in mind of having a pain vehicle and an outcome mm -hmm. i help niche with pain use vehicle to desired outcome not specifically with those exact words but then that rough structure and then once you've got the foundation you can jazz it up a little bit and make it sound good but not at the expense of damaging the foundation of what you're trying to communicate for, every, for everybody listening repeat that again so grab grab a note on your phone mm -hmm. grab a pen and paper grab anything whatever like whatever you've got in front of you write this down i help niche with pain use vehicle get to desired outcome now don't use get to and fucking with and stuff like that but it's basically got to say something along the lines of because the, the the boring ones are the best ones because they just fucking hit home and they resonate like the ones that say something like i help stressed teachers use holistic lifestyle therapies to gain peace for example i mean that was wasn't the best one but a teacher is going to listen to that and they're going to go oh my god i'm stressed Mm. Oh my God, I want peace in my life. Oh my God, they help teachers just like me. They must really better understand me and help me. And okay, how does she help them with? Ah, holistic lifestyle therapies. That makes sense. I can see how that would work for me. I haven't tried that before. I'm going to see if they're where to help me. Guys, visualize this, right? Let's imagine for a moment you've got your Facebook profile. Your Facebook profile is really, really, really clean. It's really jazzed up. You've got a great professional image of yourself. You've got a great professional banner image. And you've got that great I help statement. It's really clear. It's clear as day. Everybody knows you help stressed out teachers. Everybody knows how you help them. And everybody knows what vehicle you use to help them and where they're going to get, what their desired outcome is, right? Now compare that to the 99% of coaches out there who haven't put any thought really into their profile picture, no thought into their banner, no thought into their content. And they're about just says their list of qualifications. Yeah, yeah. Right? Now let's think about that because this is what we see all the time. Instead of the I help statement is the list of qualifications mm. and nothing really that tells well, anyone about what that coach does or who they help. Or just something generic, like I help people become the best version of themselves or something. And it's like, well, people don't, I mean, it's only a small percentage of people that really desire that. Like some people just don't want to be stressed <laughs> or some people just want confidence. They're like, no, I don't really have a desire to be the best version of myself, actually. People have got this really weird thing where they believe they're different from everybody else. Like everybody listening to this somehow feels like they are just a slight version of a normal human where they just get things slightly differently to everybody else. Like it's just, but I thought that was just me that felt like that. I thought I was the only one that felt a little bit different. And then I, I mentioned it in like an AA meeting once and I, and then fucking everyone, every single person said they felt the same. And I was like, Oh, okay. So that's just one of those things that no one talks about, mm. but we, everyone feels different and they always think, Oh, it, that would work for everybody, but it just wouldn't work for me. I'm different. It wouldn't work for me. It wouldn't work for someone like me. And unless you're specific and reach out and go, no, 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 no. I help people like you with the exact pain that you've got, get to the exact thing that you want. And look at my testimonies. They're all people exactly like you with the pain you had, get to the outcome that you want. And how's that for proof? And also come and have a look at my website. You'll love the colors and fonts and branding. It will really resonate with you. And listen to my story. It will really mm. resonate with you. It's the exact journey that you're at at the moment and where you're going on. And look, let me, let me talk to you about bits of content that I know are going to help you sit down. Let me tell you about all the things that I know are holding you back. And it just makes life a lot easier. And they can't deny it. Then you cannot do that unless you are focusing on a specific demographic of person, right? Mm. You can't do any of the things that Lewis just said, if you're focusing on people, because people don't exist anywhere. People don't relate to one message. You know, people cannot relate to any fonts and colors. People doesn't exist. Get yeah, people yeah. out of and your head. Clients don't either, because the amount of people mm -hmm. that say to me, oh, I don't know where to find clients. And I'm like, well, who is your client? And they're like, well, I don't know. And it's like, they, 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 they think there's this Facebook group full of like clients. And there's this website called client.com and they can just go there and go, Hey, who wants coaching? But it's like, <laughs> you have to, you have to, the benefit of finding a niche is you then you know where to go and find them you know where to go and get them if you help teachers go into a facebook community full of teachers use hashtags and teachers go to networking groups for teachers like 
search them on LinkedIn, teacher. They're fucking everywhere. You know exactly where they are. And that's it. That's the first stage. I mean, there's a lot of other stages to build in the business and we'll have to save those for other podcasts. But, but yeah, like if you understand who your niche is, you know where to find them as well. Not just resonate with them. You know where they're at and how to go and communicate with them and add value to them. Otherwise, they're just these blind people. You're almost going into a room and going, coaching, coaching, get your coaching. Anyone for coaching in here? You know, hoping that someone goes, oh, yeah, I am. Just, oh, I got fucking hell. Jenny from Holiday in 2004 didn't realize that she wanted coaching. Thank, thank, that's lovely. Wow, I've got a client. And then, and then finished after that. It's like, well, coaching around what? That's the thing. What? What's the pain? What's the vehicle? What's the desired outcome? What the fuck does Jenny from the holiday four years ago actually want? And is it something that I can even help her with? Is it something I'm interested in? Is it something that I've got any interest in sitting there and listening to for an hour? Right? Like, is it anything that I have any form of experiencing to even be able to relate to this person, even though I'm using coaching techniques that simply ask questions? It's, you can't have it random. You cannot have it random. It needs to be very specific. A lot of stuff about coaching in terms of the techniques as well. It's very specific. We're always asking our clients, like, tell me specifically, what do you want? Okay, but specifically, how is that a problem for you? It's exactly the same with a niche. We want specifics. We can't have it vague in general. So let's, let's tie this up, right, with the, with the steps that we have given everybody so far. Because like we said, this is a deep topic. We could very well do a part two on this. Maybe we should do a part two on this and dive into it even deeper. So you but, see what we can squeeze in over the next nine minutes. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, what, what can we squeeze in over the next nine minutes? So what would be, what would be the, nat the natural next stage for people to be concerned with after they thought, okay, right, pain, desire, outcome, vehicle, this is what I'm interested in, this is what I'd like to be stuck in a lift with, this is what I have experience in as well. I help statement, that's the structure of the I help statement. I know not to be general. What would be the next next natural step for people listening? Well, it's, it's probably actually not the next step. It's probably actually before creating the I help statement. We just happened to speak about that. But what I always ask people to start with is one word, the go-to word that you, know, you want people to associate with you. Because you want to build this authoritative coaching brand that people know that you're the person to go to. I helped this one woman pick a niche, one of my clients, and she picked... Um, mindset coaching for expats brilliant niche because it's so specific because she she was from poland and she uh, moved to london and there was like this new sets of mindset challenges like finding new social circles it not being very confident in the language that you speak and it was like a whole big, big cultural shock so she knew that there was a big pain there that she truly understood perfect niche because you know, she enjoys talking about it because she understands it. She's got a big relevance in it and there's a desire for it. And oh shit, <laughs> I've actually, before jumping on, I forgot that there was one that I missed out. So there's three parts to this. What you enjoy doing and who you enjoy spending your time with, step one. Because always remember there's a topic and the audience. You must get both. Because the amount of times I speak to people, they go, yeah, I've got my niche. It's helping people break down beliefs. And I go, yeah, okay. Oh, there's so much wrong with that. But even, <laughs> at least pick a person. And like, who? People. People like me. And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, <laughs> go stick in your job. No, I'm joking. I don't really. Um, but yeah, so the first one, topic and the audience, what you enjoy doing, who you like spending your time with. The second one, who you can like personally resonate with, something that's part of your journey, something that's actually you've experienced that you truly understand. And you haven't just picked a niche because you think, oh, that, that will do. It's because you, you get it. You've been through it. And the third one is something that will pay you money because you can't, there's no point picking a niche specifically for a coaching business and the idea of a business is to make a profit and make money if your niche isn't gonna be able to pay you mm. so if you pick oh i want to help students i want to help you know single mums and, and, and of course you can still help those single mums and that's a bit unfair but like mm -hmm. it depends what your objective is like if you just want to really help people that's brilliant and if you're looking to make a lot of money then you've got to pick a niche that's got money. And, though, and unfortunately, like single mums is like such rewarding work to do, for example, but a lot of those might not have a stable income. It's very controversial. I think I might regret saying that actually, but it's just the truth. And it's just an experience that I've had. And I'll tell you why that one comes up a lot because there's a lot of the, the typical demographic of a coach is a woman. Mm -hmm. And there's a large percentage of women that are single parents. And typically a lot of people try and find a niche that they believe is actually the form of them. Sure. They're trying to help. They're trying to help themselves. They're like, I want to help the the the, the me before, and I, I hear the reason why I picked the single mum. And guys, you know, I'm really not, you know, saying don't help single mums. I mean, that would be really unfair of me to do that. 
but I've just come up a lot when people get quite frustrated when they, they pick that as their niche, because it seems like a very obvious uh, niche to go for because they feel like they can truly resonate with them. Mm. And then they just get frustrated that a lot of people are giving them no's because of the financial impact of it. And they use that as uh, an indication that there's something wrong with their coaching ability or it's not the right fit for them. And it's quite disheartening to see. So just make sure you pick a niche that can afford the premium mm. level of a coaching because for someone that hasn't got the finances, we don't want to exclude them, but they can watch your content on social media. They can read your eBooks. They can join your Facebook group, but your one-to-one -one premium premium coaching service needs to be at a premium price and someone that can afford to pay it. And at the end of the day, if you want to help the demographics that wouldn't be able to afford to pay for your coaching, the absolute best thing you can do is go and build a successful business, make a lot of money and free up your time to be able to go and help those people for free. That is yeah. the best thing you can do. Yeah. It's like we always say, we use the analogy of an aeroplane. They say, if the oxygen masks drop down, make sure you put your own mask on first because if you don't have oxygen, you can't help anybody else. This is exactly the same. You could have the best intentions in the world. You want to coach single mums, students, the homeless as well. You, obviously, there's so many people, yeah. homeless people that benefit massively from mindset coaching. Actors, as well, naturally, of course, that one crossed my mind when I first started out as a coach. Yeah. Fucking 90% of actors don't have a pot to piss in. And I was oh, wondering, right? Oh, right? So oh, there's oh, loads of demographics yeah. that, that don't have money, right? But at the end of the day, if you want to help those demographics, the best thing you can do is focus on a demographic that can pay you, build a very successful coaching business, make money, free up your time, and then go and help those people. I just need to put like an even another a caveat in there because I, <laughs> I know that will offend some people. Guys, I love all you single mums out there. I'm not saying you don't deserve coaching. I'm just talking strategically from a logical business point of view. And there are some more financially more desirable niches out there. Guys, if you are a single mum, some of you make an incredible amount of money and you're absolute superheroes. It's just the... Uh, the generalization of that specific demographic isn't always as financially viable as say, for example, coaching CEOs would be. Well, it's like you acting, know? isn't it? You know, yeah. there's a very small percentage of actors that are making a considerable amount of money. But if we're going to look at the vast majority and we do put yeah. our business head on and we do look at the vast majority, mm. actors, single moms, students, it's, just, it's, it's, well, uh, why are you, why are you slagging off actors, mate? Because right? well, that was who I once was. And I want to help those actors. No, but it's, like, but it's fucking true. Like, I was an actor for a long time. I had absolutely fuck all money until I started doing like some decent roles. And that was rare. That was rare. Like, and even then that money would go on my rent for fucking six months. And I'd worry about where my next job's going to come from. Yeah. But so we got to think about these things, haven't we? But yeah. you know what? Now, now, if I wanted to, I can help actors all I want because I run a successful business and I'm not now reliant on... Don't bother. Well, I might, but you know. I'm not, I'm not that fast. <laughs> I might go and help single mums. In fact, I do. Actually, a lot of the, a lot yeah. of the content, a lot of the people that we, we help with our free content that goes out, lots of single mums in there and lots of other, I feel like I'm digging myself a hole. Single mums, I love you all. I love you all. Right, so guys, with a niche, one word that represents what you do, mindset, fulfillment, clarity, please don't add more things in there. The more is not better. Just because you've got your yoga teacher training and your Reiki master doesn't necessarily mean you have to crowbar them all in because it actually dilutes the value that you've got to offer. Yeah, one word, whether that be mindset, whether that be business, whether that be clarity, have that one word so people can start to, oh yes, I was telling the story about the woman that picked the, um, the niche as helping expats. She got about three speaking gigs within about three weeks because of that niche. Because say, for example, you have an expat community and you, you stumbled across this coach that specifically helps expats. Then of course, you want them in part of your organization you want them to come and speak you want them to come and train because it's going to add more value to your people and it gives some certainty so the more specific you are the more certainty you create and the more opportunities you'll get like that happens all the time like people literally change their bio around on social media like they just update their instagram bio and people message them and say hey we're looking for someone to come and talk into our expat community and that's actually how you got your jobs at like amazon and things wasn't it mm -hmm. just by you know having a specific focus and them needing that and then you being the person that they got in for it so Absolutely, yeah that was it people knew me for that person that increased performances within teams within groups within senior management and they were like fucking this is the guy this is yeah. the in reality they might not even know how good you were but they were just like well he says he is so that's good enough for us apart from all these other people that can help us maybe create 
our self like break down our self-limiting beliefs and abundance and yoga and reiki and like mm -hmm. you know massage course i did nine years ago as well you know it just dilutes it and muddies the water doesn't it it's funny how things snowball as well as well because like the very first time i was hired on mtv to be a coach then i got like two more phone calls boom boom back to back straight after that from teams production teams that weren't connected with each other i said oh is this because i just recently did that tv show and they were like we didn't even know about that right but it's funny how it snowballs because all of a sudden they might not know about it but they've heard about you from someone else someone else someone else someone else who they've connected you with so it just trickles the whole thing yeah, they, they might be going oh I, you know our team's really lacking in performance right now and they go liam you need to speak to liam that's exactly what he does he helps teams like build their performance so mm -hmm. he'll definitely be able to help you with that oh really and then they look at your profile and it's singing everything the same the same hymn over and over again peak performance peak performance peak performance it's like it's there on his social media it's there on his ebook it's there in his content right this guy's the one get him in get him in so guys we have to cut this short but this isn't this wasn't deliberate but i've just realized we do actually I, i've written an ebook on how it's called how to discover your coaching niche and it's actually like a very very comprehensive ebook that helps you find your niche as well as how to construct the I help statement and a lot of other things we didn't have a chance to share with you today. So this was a little introduction. We might may or may not do another one, depending on if we think we've covered enough ground. It is a long topic, but we'd always advise people to use the information they've got to get started. You know, go out there and refine it down a little bit and see how you get on. But if you do want to download this ebook, it's completely free and you can get that over at the coachingmasters.com forward slash discover dash your dash coaching dash niche that's the coachingmasters.com forward slash discover dash your dash coaching dash niche it's a very very high value quite a considerably long ebook actually for something that's a free value and that will help you break down your coaching niche and help you create your eye help statement and a lot of other things that we haven't shared today so i hope that's helpful Awesome, mate. Awesome. You are Mr. Niche. And I've learned a considerable amount from you about niching since our time working mm -hmm. together. I, as I was always, always said, I know more about it than most people, but you are the one to talk to about niching, which is fucking awesome. Well, look, at, look at our business. As soon as we niche down to the coaching masters, I mean, how fucking niche do you want to be? Like the coaching masters. Even our name says our niche. Mm -hmm. um, and all we talk about is coaching, you know, the, the podcast, the coaching masters podcast the the facebook group coaching mastery you know everything we talk about every story we share every experience we've had coaching 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 and that might have contributed to the fact that we've got a lovely seven-figure business with a big team and everything else because imagine if we was just the the masters yeah, yeah. <laughs> think, think about our previous business so Lewis used to run a business called Hunger Star and I used to run a business called the Aspiration Hub and people were like oh yeah what's that all about there that sounds yeah, good yeah. <laughs> well actually Someone, people used to think Hunger Star was about a personal training. Oh, interesting. But this shows you how like important things like that are because it, it, it might it mm. might not just like repel your audience and you know not give them certainty. It might just completely confuse the fuck out of them as well. Like if you write that whole abundant sentence that doesn't really make much sense, and they might just go, "What do they even do? I don't even know what that is, let alone how that will help me." Um, same with Hunger Star and the Aspiration Hub. I mean, the Aspiration Hub was a little bit clearer, but Hunger Start, I thought that was genius at the time, but. In in reality it doesn't really make much sense oh but to be fair like aspiration hub was the same like people didn't know what it was until i explained it to them there was a sense that okay what could this be like what corporate training is this something to do with sports maybe is this like what what is it but until there was the explanation fucking no one knew but yeah awesome mate that's good what we'll do is we'll make a decision to see if this does need a part two because like lewis said this is a deep 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 topic but for every coaching listening to this episode, we are going to say this explicitly. Please find a niche. Don't be a generalist. It will kill yeah. your business. So <laughs> go out there and find your coaching niche, please. Be specific. Be accurate. Create that one word that you want the whole industry to know you for and recommend you for and get you in when there's opportunities. Create a very specific I help statement that has a pain, a vehicle and an outcome and focus on one topic that you're truly passionate about that you have experience in and that can actually pay you money and for the love of god choose a person a type of person a demographic an interest a profession that you actually want to spend time with because this is your life we're talking about here and a coaching session isn't just a coaching session it's a little sliver of your life that you will never get back so go out there finally create the perfect coaching niche and go and create the business that you deserve Everywhere.